right, so welcome to our conversations today. We're having a conversation about faith, and I'm honored to introduce you today. We have Mr. Joel Richardson. He comes from Kansas City all the way to Colorado Springs, and he's a New York Times bestselling author. He's a filmmaker, and he's a Bible teacher, a globally recognized Bible teacher. So I'm so excited to have him today, and he has a ministry. It's called Joel Richardson Ministries, and what's the mission of your ministry? So I do a lot of things. I mean, I'm traveling around and speaking at churches. I'm writing. Yeah. But behind the scenes, uh, my primary ministry is I work with a few different ministries. Yeah. One is called GCM. This is the largest underground church network in Iran, Afghanistan, and the Farsi Persian speaking world. Um, and another ministry called FAI. And so we're working in the Middle East, in Israel, in Cyprus. And one of the main projects that we've been doing the past year and a half is sending doctors, medics, and nurses into southern Syria. Wow. And so we're focused on Israel, the Islamic world, the Muslim world. And so I sort of use my platform as I travel yeah. around to raise awareness and support for some of these ministries that I'm doing. So I, I sometimes joke and I say, yeah. I do Bible prophecy to pay for my missions habit. So why don't you just share with my viewers, let them get to know you a little bit. What do you enjoy teaching about as a Bible teacher? Yeah, I would say of everything that I teach on, probably the return of Jesus. Mm. Um, for me, I think that's, when I look at the Bible, mm -hmm. I think this is the primary focal point of the biblical prophets, of Jesus, of the apostles. Everything is mm -hmm. pointing toward his return yeah. as the day of justice, as the day of expectation. All of creation is groaning for this. And for the most part, in my opinion, much of the church, most pulpits today, they don't really focus on it. They don't talk about it because it's sort of been tied into a whole subject that's viewed as kind of weird and strange. And yeah. this is what the fringy folks talk about. Yeah. So I like to bring the biblical focus back to the return of Jesus. It gives me hope, gives me excitement in the midst of sort of all of the mess that's unfolding out there in the world. Yeah. I like thinking about that. It makes me happy. Yeah. And so that's what I like to talk about. I love that. The Lord has these um, treasures throughout the earth that point to him being Lord and Savior, I was not always saved as well. Joel, I had a hard time believing that Jesus was the only way to the Father. And so I would love for you to bring maybe some apologetics to the table for some people that are maybe on the fence. of the, I, I think that Jesus might be true, but I'm not fully sure. In your experience throughout studying the Word and maybe seeing things in the natural, what are some miracles that you've seen? Okay, so first of all, here's my process. I go, you know, the blind watchmaker's argument. So I look at my body okay. and I go, something, an organic computer up here tells this with all these sinews and tendons to do this, you know? Yeah. That's, yep. I'm a machine. Yeah. I'm better than a backhoe. I'm yep. better, you know? Yeah. So I was made, I was designed yep. by an intelligent being. I said, I start there. There is a God, there's an intelligent yes. being. How do I know that Jesus is? The, mm -hmm. the biblical narrative is because I look at specifically I look at Israel yes there's a lot of things that we can look at I look at Israel and that to me is proof that the God of the Bible is true you know there are some Christians that say well God's done with Israel the church has replaced Israel and all this and I go wait a minute if God's done with Israel now this isn't a strange apologetic mm -hmm. but I go Satan obviously has not received the memo <laughs> yeah so Satan is real yes and the funny thing, too, is yes. when it comes to unbelievers, you go, do you believe in God? They go, no, not really. Do you believe in Jesus? Not really. Do you believe in demons? They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've met them. You know, kind of yeah. thing. Especially the druggies. But, yeah. um, but here's the thing is yeah. Satan hates what God loves. But in resisting the things of God, he tips his hat to the things of God. So you can look at wow. the attention, the controversy, the rage of the nations against mm -hmm. Israel. And you go, obviously, God is doing something here. Yeah. And so the fact that it is the epicenter of global geopolitical controversy wow. proves to me yeah. that the words of the biblical prophets are true. That. So. I love that. Talk a little bit more about how Israel is involved in Jesus' return. It's overwhelming for me. I'm sure it's overwhelming for my viewers. Unpack that a little bit. Okay, so the return of Jesus is the yearning and expectation of every human heart. Because what we long for... At the end of the book, Revelation, mm -hmm. John the Apostle sees God Almighty on his throne in heaven and he says, Behold, I'm about to make all things new. Behold, I make all things new. Yeah. So the biblical narrative says that the world is going to be returned to this Edenic state, the Garden of Eden. 
but yet if you read the description of the prophets, it's better than that. It's a glorified Davidic kingdom or the kingdom of Solomon, you know, at the height of their glory. Mm -hmm. So combine the Davidic kingdom in all of its glory with the Garden of Eden, mix it together. Jesus is on the throne in Jerusalem and the knowledge of God the, from Israel, from this launching pad, all of the nations will be discipled. Mm -hmm. We'll be taught the ways of God and, and the earth will be restored back to its Edenic state. So this is because look, I don't care how great your life is. Every one of us knows something is fundamentally completely broken with the system. Wow. The world's messed up. It's fundamentally unjust. It's corrupt. You know, it's not supposed to be this way. It's not supposed to be sickness dying. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. And he says, all of that's going to be a thing of the past. So the return of Jesus for me, it's about the day of justice, the day when all of, you know, the global industry of human trafficking comes to an end. The global industry of abortion comes to an end. Yeah. Corrupt politicians, sickness, yeah. aging, dying, yeah. sagging, bad breath. <laughs> All those things. It comes to an end. And so, you know, it's it's this is the age that whether we realize it or not, we're all yearning for. We're, yeah. we're, we're sighing, we're groaning yeah. for it. All of creation's yearning yeah, for absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is the good news. This yeah. is the gospel. The gospel yeah. is that day is coming. Yeah. And so we can say the return of Jesus, but really what I love to talk about is the gospel, the good well, news. Yeah. Amen. Well, how can we, myself, youth of America, how can we be prepared or preparing for the coming of Christ? So one of the most important things for any Christian is to be aware of, it says we are not ignorant of the wiles, the schemes of Satan. So we have to be aware of the lies, the, the messages that we are being bombarded with every second, really every good. minute of That's the day. That's really good. That's we're, right. We're being fed information, sometimes yeah. passively. We, we don't even yeah. realize it. Our job is to recognize the yeah. message yeah. and realize that there is an alternative message. Mm -hmm. So we put this down. Mm -hmm. We open up the Bible. Yeah. And we feed our spirit. We, you know what we look at, what we read, what yeah. we put into us yeah. with the truth. Yeah. And we begin to see that there's two very different messages. Yeah. The message of the world, which are a thousand different messages and the message of, and we align ourselves with reality. You know, yeah. everything now is virtual mm. reality. Mm. When we enter into the reality of the word, yeah. we, we enter into praise and thanksgiving. Instead of a virtual reality yeah. machine, we're stepping into an ultimate reality wow. machine. Yeah. And we need to start living in reality. Yes. And it's so easy now to live in a virtual reality. That's so true. I love that. Thank you for tapping into that. And ultimately, guys, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let's talk about your most recent book. So um, the title is Mount Sinai in Arabia, the true location. True location. And it releases this week. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about that book. So essentially, traditionalist scholars say that Mount Sinai is in the Sinai Peninsula, okay. this pizza-shaped peninsula okay. in between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Okay. It's actually part of Egypt. Okay. And I believe that it's actually in Saudi Arabia. So earlier this year, I had a chance to slip into Saudi Arabia, a very difficult country to get into. Hmm. And I'm absolutely convinced that this particular mountain known as Jabal Allah's, the Mountain of Almonds in mm -hmm. Arabic, is the real Mount Sinai. And, and what's so powerful about this is that it's been hidden behind this Islamic Iron Curtain for so many years. And now the Saudis are about to build this mega city up there called Neom. Okay. It's about to be open to the world. And the thing of it is, is within the biblical narrative, Mount Sinai, this is the mountain that God came down in, in the most overt theophany, appearance of God, fire, clouds, trumpets, earthquakes. And it's the, it's the craziest part of the whole Bible. The, the ocean being ripped in half, you know, this kind of thing. Mm. And so I really believe that in the fullness of time, God is about to bring the attention of the world back to this mountain as a testimony to the whole world. We live in an age where unbelief, intellectual atheism, agnosticism, you name it, anything but biblical faith is pretty much spreading and expanding. And in this age of unbelief, God's going to say, hey guys, remember this? Mm -hmm. And all the evidence is right there. And it was, for me, visiting it was one of the most awe-inspiring, faith-building, if not the most awe-inspiring, faith-building experience in my life. Wow. It's, it's amazing. 